Well, good morning. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Really excited. Uh, before we begin, I, I would like to acknowledge that we're gathered on the unceded and traditional territories of the Halkamalem, Semiamu, and Squamish-speaking people. Uh, I'm Kevin Quinn, CEO of TransLink, and so excited to be here today. Thank you so much for joining us on this, this very brisk February morning uh, as, uh, as we welcome a new, very electric member to our TransLink family. Um, joining me today is uh, the Member of Parliament uh, for Steveson Richmond East, Parm Baines, uh, Minister of State for Infrastructure and Transit, Dan Coulter, uh, as well as the Chair of the Mayor's Council, Mayor Brad West. Uh, I'd also like to recognize Councillor Admins, uh, Adsmanson from uh, Coquitlam and Vice Chair Andy Ross. Andy, I see you there. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Uh, and you'll hear from them momentarily, but first, thank you all so much for being here uh, for this important announcement and for supporting transit. I'm so proud to announce that today we begin an important expansion to our battery electric bus fleet. Uh, the bus right behind me is the first of 15 new fully electric buses entering service that will save over 1,000 tons of greenhouse gas emissions every single year. Transit is already one of the greenest ways to travel, but these buses will make it even greener. I'm also proud to announce that this is the world debut of the LFSE Plus battery electric bus model from Nova Bus. And this bus can travel over 150 kilometers on a single charge and can charge for the next trip in approximately five minutes while customers board. It will also save us $40,000 in fuel costs every year. And once in service, these 15 new buses will fully electrify Route 100, which travels from here to Marpole. This expansion is a, a really small but important step toward reaching our ambitious climate goals. And with help from all levels of government, we're working to upgrade our infrastructure by installing new overhead chargers throughout the region and by upgrading our transit centers for more battery electric buses. And once those upgrades are complete, we'll be set to add 400 more of these buses by 2030 putting us on a path to a zero emission bus fleet by 2040. I wanna thank so many people for supporting the electrification of our bus fleet. Thank you to our partners from Nova Bus for your work and choosing TransLink for this world debut. Uh, thank you MP Baines and the Government of Canada for supporting our battery electric bus expansion through the Canada Community Building Fund. I'll wait. Thank you so much to Minister Coulter and the Government of British Columbia for committing to support the electrification of our, three, of our fleet through the 2022 investment plan. Thank you, uh, uh, Mayor West and all the mayors of the Mayor's Council for supporting our electrification and climate action targets. Uh, and finally, uh, I've got to give a big shout out, a big thank you to all the CNBC staff who I see here today for your fantastic work, um, who have spent just countless hours testing and commissioning this bus, the advancement of electrification of our fleet, um, we couldn't do this without you. And so uh, uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce Parm Baines, the Member of Parliament for Steveston Richmond East, to speak on behalf of Infrastructure Canada. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. And I am Parm Baines. I'm the Member of Parliament for Steveston Richmond East. I'm here on behalf of the Honorable Dominic LeBlanc, Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs and Infrastructure and Communities, on this uh, great milestone of the announcement for TransLink, TransLink's battery electric bus launch. And uh, thank you, Kevin, for the uh, very important uh, land acknowledgement as well. And uh, I'd like to uh, also, you know, uh, be wel uh, welcome. Uh, our regional partners here and we truly believe as a government that with our strong relationships with our regional partners we can actually get a lot of things done and we're really um, uh, pleased to get a lot of pro projects underway here. So it's a pleasure to be here with Minister Coulter, Chair of um, uh, Mayor's, uh, Mayor's Council on Regional Transportation, Brad West, Kevin Quinn, CEO, TransLink, as well as the members of TransLink's board and executives. And I see the mayor of New West is also here. Mayor Johnston, how are you? Good to see you here. 
Um, and I also know my colleague, uh, Minister Sajjan, who I am also filling in for today, <laughs> wishes he could be here today. Our government remains focused on building a brighter future, a more prosperous, more resilient, and more sustainable uh, Canada for our children and our grandchildren. That is why we continue to take strong climate action, make life more affordable, grow our economy, and create good middle-class jobs across the country. As we continue this work, we are furthering our investments in infrastructure to support Canadians. Our goal is to strengthen our economy and our communities and to provide new social and economic opportunities for families, youth and seniors. Today, we are here to celebrate an investment in cleaner transportation that will improve the lives of British Columbians, the expansion of TransLink's battery electric bus fleet. Through the Canada Community Building Fund, our government supported this project with an investment of $16 million to help address the unique needs of the community, in this case, expanding TransLink's battery electric bus fleet from four buses to 19 buses as of early next year. And today, the first of the 15 buses will begin to serve Route 100. This project means that Route 100 will be fully electrified by 2024, reducing emissions and helping residents get around in clean and affordable ways. The fleet expansion represents a commitment our partners here today share to build a greener future for everyone. And as we work towards our goal of achieving zero emissions by 2050, projects like this one will help us ensure that we cre and create opportunities for Canadians along the way. Once all 15 buses are in operation, they will help reduce emissions by over 1,000 tons annually. Um, by working closely with our partners, we can build the future we want, taking strong climate action, growing the economy, and bolstering communities. Together, we will make bigger strides towards our common goal of a greener, more inclusive Canada. We will keep working collaboratively with our partners to support meaningful investments in infrastructure projects across the country that deliver results, just like the one we're celebrating today. When we invest in infrastructure, we're creating stronger communities and investing in the well-being of Canadians today and for generations to come. Thank you, merci. And now I'll pass it over to um, um, MLA Coulter. Thank you, thank you uh, very much, MP uh, Baines, and uh, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, grateful to be here on the territory of the Musqueam, tsleil and Squamish peoples. As uh, BC's Minister of State for Infrastructure and Transit, I'm pleased to be with you today for this announcement that provides uh, people with more energy efficient transportation options. And as Mr. Quinn reminded me earlier, the SkyTrain above us is ele electric as well. So before I hand this over to Mayor and Chair of the Mayor's Council, Brad West, I'd like to say a few words. Last month, Premier Eby asked me to assume the responsibility of Minister of State for Infrastructure and Transit. This is indeed an honour and something I am very excited to be taking on. Our government knows that folks want more sustainable transit options. I'm already very familiar with the importance TransLink puts on reducing emissions in our province as evidenced by their corporate commitment to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 with an interim reduction of 45 percent by 2030. I know TransLink plans on expanding their battery electric bus fleet from four to 155 vehicles by late 2025 providing the people of Metro Vancouver more opportunity to shift from a personal vehicle to a zero emission transit option. The province is excited to support these expansions. Thank you. Ex uh, support these expansion plans through significant funding in TransLink's 2022 investment plan. We are committed to expanding and accelerating access to clean transportation that connects folks with the communities they work, live, and play in. The Clean Transportation Action Plan to be released. Later this year is a key commitment included in the Clean BC Roadmap to 2030. Our government's approach to reducing emissions in public transportation includes choosing cleaner modes of transportation, accelerating targets for zero emission vehicles, and using cleaner fuels. Our target is to reduce carbon pollution from the transportation sector by 27 to 32% by 2030. 
Once released, the action plan will outline the province's next set of commitments to reduce GHG emissions. This will include actions to increase share of trips by walking, cycling, and transit to 30% of all trips by supporting mode shift to active transportation and public transit. Our government is supporting emission reductions by focusing on energy efficient transportation op options, such as continued expansion of the battery electric bus fleet, the new SkyTrain station uh, extension in Surrey, which has entered the procurement phase, the Broadway subway project, which has broken through at the future Mount Pleasant station for the Millennium Line SkyTrain station, also work together with TransLink and BC Transit to provide free transit for kids 12 years and under, making transit an easier choice for families and helping creating lifelong transit uh, users. Also investments in active transportation infrastructure through investments such as the Active Transportation Infrastructure Grants Program, investing $60 million uh, in community-led act active transportation projects over the next three years. The province is committed to a long-term growth strategy that makes getting around safer and more convenient, all while helping to protect our environment. These are the sorts of programs that help people make sustainable transit decisions. Today's announcement brings BC one step closer to a net zero transportation system. And I would now like to invite Mayor West up for today's announcement. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm going to try and time the best parts of this speech. So you can hear them. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Coulter, for that warm introduction on, as has been said, a very brisk day. First of all, I have to tell you, that is one heck of a smooth ride and very quiet, which is uh, probably important. Uh, my name is Brad West. I'm mayor of the city of Port Coquitlam and very proud to be chair of the mayor's council. I want to acknowledge my colleagues, uh, Councillor Asmussen from the city of Coquitlam and Mayor Johnstone from the city of New Westminster. Thank you for being here. On behalf of the mayor's council, we're very excited to see this expansion to TransLink's battery electric bus fleet, a move that is going to save more than 1,000 tons of greenhouse gas emissions every year. Every day, hundreds of thousands of people rely upon TransLink services to get to where they need to go. And we all have a responsibility to ensure that we are providing a service that is not only reliable and efficient, but also to ensure that when customers are choosing transit, they are choosing the most sustainable way to get around. This latest order of Nova LF SE plus electric buses, by the way, made in Canada, doesn't get any better than that, will help us get one step closer to this goal. Battery electric buses are good for customers and they're good for our environment. Fully electrifying Route 100 is the first step as we charge towards our goal of turning over to a zero emission bus fleet. We know there is no time to waste when it comes to taking climate action. Our past few scorching summers have been a stark reminder of the urgency of having more days like today. We know that transportation makes up the bulk of emissions in our region at 35%. And while transit only makes up a fraction of this, every bit helps. There is still a lot of work to be done, however. The Mayor's Council is committed to advancing TransLink's ambitious pathway to becoming a net zero organization as TransLink welcomes new buses and works to upgrade their charging infrastructure. This region's mayors are united in working together with senior levels of government and we thank our provincial and federal partners for their support. And we're going to continue to work together to ensure that TransLink can reduce emissions, expand service, and improve the livability of this region for all the people who call Metro Vancouver home. Thank you very much for being here today to help us mark this important milestone. 
Thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll, we'll now take questions from any of our speakers. So if anybody has a question, uh, we'll start with uh, one question, one follow-up for now. We can always come back if there's time. Uh, the first question comes from CTV. Yeah, you can go ahead. Yep. Yeah. For any of the speakers. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Or no, you can just yell it. It's all good. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. So as, as Mayor West noted, it's a very smooth ride. So as, you, as you're on the bus, uh, it's uh, much quieter. It's much quieter both for riders. I'll wait. We got to keep service running, folks. We got to keep this region moving, OK? So um, uh, you know, it's a much quieter ride, much smoother ride for our customers. I think you know, uh, as, as, as these buses go through neighborhoods, residences won't hear those buses as much. Uh, it's just putting out less pollutants. You don't smell that, that diesel smell. And so this is just the, the start of that long journey of transitioning the fleet to all battery electric buses. Um, no, I, you know, the, I mean, the bus still has, has some noise to it. It's not totally silent, right? And, and our drivers are uh, very, very well trained. Uh, and so uh, safety.